hey friends, it's Tracy and Violet from Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. Um, it is 7.34 in the morning. We got back from our walk a little while ago and it is snowing like crazy here in Nova Scotia, but it was really nice to go for a walk in this morning. It's still dark out, it's snowy. I have my big old parka on. Violet's jumping all around in the snow. She loves the snow, so um, we're back. I'm having a coffee. I got a house full. I'm sorry I haven't been able to get videos up like I wanted to. I was thinking, oh yes, I'll be able to do videos every day this month, like vlogmas, but no, not happening. I got a house full of people, house full of family, and I need, my energy is here, there, and everywhere, so I can't focus on that. I can't even, well, the past couple days I haven't read a page, so I don't know how much reading I'll do the rest of this month, but one of the books I did read this month was I'm thinking of ending things I read this book because there's so much hype about it I had to see what it was all about and I guess it's a show on Netflix I've never seen it I don't know whether I'll bother seeing it or not but uh, there's a lot of people that really like this book and I thought I'll read that one it's not very long it's only like 200 pages or something let me see Here comes one of my children. 210 pages. Hold the phone. All right, guys. I'm at a different location at a different time. It's 2.16 in the afternoon. When I started this video, the kids all got up, so all heck broke loose, and yeah, I couldn't finish it. But I will forget what I last said, but I had to read this book to find out what the big whoop was about it because I heard a lot of people talking about it. And I don't always buy like the newest books, not that this is brand new, but the hyped up books, but sometimes I do because I want to see what this is about. And I didn't know if this was specifically horror or thriller or like suspense or mystery. I really have no idea and I guess there's a show. My dishwasher's going. Oh, you can't see. The fire's going. That pot on the stove is chili I just made on the wood stove. It's going to be for supper tonight. But anyways, I have a second coffee of the day. I'm not having a tea today. I want a coffee. And that's what I'm having because I'm a grown-up and I can do that. But I'll read the back of this right off the bat. You might see my youngest son roller skate in and around and back out. Maybe. Uh, a woman embarks on a road trip with her new boyfriend. Doubts about the relationship claw at the back of her mind. An unexpected detour unravels into a nightmare. In his acclaimed debut, Ian Reed explores the darkest depths of the human psyche, confronting the value we find in relationships and the limitations of solitude, spellbinding and taut. This novel will haunt you long after the last page is turned. Uh, yeah, so what's this book about? I won't get into it a whole bunch, but I don't really know if I like it or not, to be honest. Um, it's about this woman. You don't really find out what her name is. She's, like the book said, is on a road trip to go meet her new boyfriend's parents. They've been together for maybe two months, not that long. They met at a trivia night at a bar. They're adults, but they're not university students. They're like post-grad. Um, he is a professor, or almost a professor, or something like that at the university. She used to go to this university, but she doesn't go there anymore. They meet at this trivia night at, I think, a bar that's on the campus of a university. So she's there with friends, he's there with friends. He's quiet, that's where they, they say something clever to one another, and that's where this blossoms, according to this story. So, they have a few dates, they have a few encounters, it doesn't go into their dates or anything like that, but she just, this... This book, it's like coming from her point of view, like she's talking about what she's doing, how they met, what they're doing, like every step of the way almost. 
so I'm not used to books like that. That might be my issue. Um, so in my mind, she lives alone in this apartment. Um, he comes over and stays a few nights a week. They don't ever get totally intimate, but semi-intimate. And she'll get these random anonymous phone calls that nobody says, like the person that's calling doesn't say anything, doesn't say anything. And the weird thing is that phone number that this stranger is calling from is from her own phone number. So it looks like whoever is calling her is calling from her house, which doesn't make sense. So there's that, and she doesn't end up telling her beau. I don't even know if it says his name now. I think it does, but. Oh, for goodness sakes. I can't even think. I read this last week or something. And it's not a, a Jake. Jake is his name. And so they decide to go on this trip, to go meet his parents. And it's a little bit of a road trip. Like, it's not super far, but it's a few hours drive. And then you hear the internal dialogue of her. Of she likes him, but he's there's some things about him she's not fond of, and she can't picture being with him long term. But is that enough to break up with somebody, or am I just going to nitpick about everybody? He's kind of a straight-laced kind of guy. Like, he's not a rebel. He's not anything like that. He's a fairly young man, professional, straight-laced, and, but he grew up on a farm. So they're going to this place to meet his parents. What annoyed me about it is, like, along the way, along this drive, she talks about, you know, well, first of all, where they met, which is fine. Like, you get kind of a backstory and everything. But then it, it just goes into, I found it a bit boring, to be honest. Like, I could have easily skimmed over all of it and still got right back into the story. And I wouldn't have missed anything at all. That kind of thing. Whereas, I don't care for books like that. The story wasn't bad, but it was like... It wasn't all that exciting to me at all. So... Yeah, she'll talk about some of the quirks about Jake that she finds annoying, the way he eats his cereal, he just focuses on his food, doesn't even look up, and he takes little bites and, you know, just things like that. Um, I don't know. Just, maybe I'm nitpicking. I don't know. But they get to his family's farm. Nobody's around. Like, it's right out in the middle of smack dab nowheres. And when they first get there, they don't go right into the house. Jake decides to take her on this little walk around the property. Let's go check out the barn, check out the animals. There's pigs, there's lambs. I think there's a cow. Probably chickens. I can't remember now. Like, I'm honestly, I don't really care. But it was kind of odd because it was cold out and it's winter. And... Why take your new girlfriend to a stinky barn where the animals, by the description in the book, aren't, aren't in the greatest condition? That's all I'll say. Eventually, they get into this house, and the parents are there. They take a long time to come and greet them, though. The door's unlocked. They go. They look around. They sit down. They, the table's set and ready for supper. But the parents don't come, don't come, don't come, don't come. And then eventually they come and they're a little strange. They're a little strange. So. I know a lot of people love this book. So I don't want to get too deep into the little things that I'm saying. Because this might be your favorite book. I don't know. So just for me, not so much. At the supper, uh... The mother, she's older, but she's dressed like she's going out to a big extravagant supper. And her makeup's caked on like a doll. And her husband, he's a big old farming, rough, tough kind of guy who just grumbles and 
things. He's friendly, but he's gruff. And Jake, the son, doesn't say nothing. Doesn't say nothing. So she, the girlfriend, is there trying to make a conversation because everybody's quiet. And Jake has his head down right in his food and doesn't even look up at all. So she's trying to make small talk with these parents who are nice, but they're just a little strange. They're nice. They're not mean. They're not rude. They're just a little off. Um, and they were hoping, like the parents were hoping that they would stay overnight. There's room. There's room. But no, Jake had to get back because he had to work the next day and things things like that so on the way back I'm kind of fast forward skipping over this this is how the book was for me I could have just skimmed right over it right over it so when they first leave the house the mother gives a note to the girl the girlfriend and said no this is just for you you just open this and look at this you just open this so she doesn't open it right then she tucks it away and uh, she goes on with Jake to drive back home. It starts to blizzard. It starts to blizzard. And they end up stopping to a Dairy Queen, mind you, to get something cold to drink. And even the workers there look at Jake like he's a little strange. And one of the girls says something strange to the girlfriend in the book. Again, I'm not elaborating on any of this. It's really not a big deal at all. It was just, it felt like just a regular, like you're reading somebody's actual day in the life. There was no elements of this and this and this. Now I do have to say, once they left the parents' house, you could feel an underlying lying tension start to build, or even while they were there at the house. Nothing particularly like nobody said anything or did anything there was just something sinister about that place and it really I have to say I have to give the book credit about that and then in the drive home Jake didn't want to talk to his girlfriend about how the visit went or anything like that like the girlfriend said she liked his parents but she was very uncomfortable and found it very strange and he didn't want to hear none of it didn't want to talk about it nothing nothing so she was happy to be leaving and going back home. But the more she tried to talk to him about how she was feeling, and mind you, in her mind, she's thinking, yeah, I'm thinking of ending things. The faster he would drive, like faster and faster and faster, and it's a blizzard out, a blizzard. And then he starts talking whackers crackers, saying, oh, there's this old school we should go see this old school and fast forward a bit they pull into this old big schoolyard that if you're from the country you know sometimes schools are right out in the middle of nowhere and students are bust in not even in towns out in the boondocks and stuff so there's this nice not nice it's a great big school great big schoolyard but it's nighttime and it's a blizzard out and Jake the dingbat wants to go and show her this school that neither one of them has gone to. So all this while you feel this little bit of tension. And I'm not going to go into what happens after that. But so that was about the only part of the story I really liked was the tension from when they got to the parents house to when they got to the school. and just the sense of not knowing where is the story going like is he gonna flip out are the parents cannibals are they all mass murderers are they insane and you know like you just don't know and I would be furious if I was her if my boyfriend stopped in the middle of the blizzard to show me some GD school that I've never gone to and then I'd be like no I'd kick his arse right out to the curb and take off myself is what I would do or give him the ultimatum he would either straighten up and fly right or I'm driving oh it just made me a little yeah and then there's this like a, a flip or a twist near the end of this book the end of this book and I get it I see why people might like it 
but to me it was just extremely lame for me and I not knocking this author it wasn't like bad like it's not the worst thing in the world but I'm just like I don't get the hype about this book I really don't I don't even know if I'd bother watching the story or the movie or I don't know if it's a movie or a show um, it was quite predictable to me at, as it got closer and closer and closer I could see where this story could have shimmied off to somewhere else and got real horrific now the horror in this book it's more of a human horror is all I'll say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything much more about that but the description of the school the darkness of the night the blizzard that's raging outside but I have to say this book stirred up emotions in me and maybe that's what the purpose was. I was angry. This annoyed me in the sense that I'm just like, oh, for goodness sakes, woman, grow some balls and just deal with it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. So it's not a bad story, but a word, it was lame to me. It was kind of lame. And no offense, no offense. I would absolutely read this guy again, maybe, if there was another book. But I purposely got this book because everybody said it was such a drastic ending. And it wasn't for me. For me. For other people, maybe so. So that's, that's my take on it. It really got... It's like NPR's best book of 2016, Amazon Editor's Top 20 in 2016, the Globe, a Globe and Mail Best Book, a 49th Shelf Book of the Year. This book is the boldest, most original literary thriller to appear in some time, the Chicago Tribune. So brilliant by the Guard Guardian. So it's a very popular book, and you might really like it. Just was not my cup of tea was not I was like okay when when is something gonna happen and then when something happens I'm like um I read all this and this is what happens but that's that's just me I really 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 I recommend it if you're into thrillers and something angsty and suspenseful it's not like that through the whole book it's a little strange. There's something going on in this book that you don't know what's going to happen. Like, you don't know the whole time. And it is kind of a unique twist, but it wasn't a big enough twist for me to really... <laughs> That's one of my elders. Elders. So, just hold on a second. Yeah, that was one of the elder kids in the house. My 19-year-old son. So, anyways. This book was kind of a burp for me and but it might be right up your alley so I'm not saying don't read it it's not a terrible book it just wasn't that all that for me and the wolf certainly didn't live up to the hype again for me so anyways I got a lot to do it is snowing outside I should check that chili and and I want to say thank you for joining me today Violet is around here somewhere, but I don't know where. Great big pot of chili for supper tonight. I'll show you the snow out the window. Yeah, I woke up to that, went for a walk, and that it was beautiful, beautiful. So Anyways, I'm going to say peace, love, and happiness today and every single day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you so choose. But if not, that's okay too. I still love you. I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, all right, guys. I've been, I have a few books I need to make videos about. I just haven't got a chance to sit down and do it. But this is one of them. So, yeah, we'll see what I can do before the end of the year. I don't know. All right, with that, I'm going to say have a good night. Or have a good morning and I might see you tomorrow. Bye. Loop.